Ooh, man. <clears throat> Y'all see this hoodie? That means it's getting cold. You hear this, this chair squeaking? That means Stephen got a big old gut. But anyway, guys, winter crappy fishing. We're in the middle of it. We're getting in it. Down south, we're finally getting cold. It's not going up to 78 degrees and going back down to 30. We got like three weeks of 30 to 60 degree weather. So what do the crappy do, Steven? Where did it go? How to catch them? This is what we're gonna talk about today. You wanna catch some slabs like this? Some slabs like this? Winter time is my favorite time of year to hunt some hee-haws. Y'all stay tuned. I'm gonna tell you everything you need to know to go out, find you a big old slab and put him in the live well. Guys, welcome back to Turner Fishing. This is Steven Turner. So, winter crappy fishing, where to begin? We're not gonna bullshit this. We're not gonna, you know, have a three minute long intro. We're just gonna dive right into this. I'm gonna give you the facts and beliefs I have for crappy fishing. So make sure y'all hit that thumbs up button for me. And if you haven't already, go right there, hit that subscribe button, it's free. Just like the video you're about to watch. So to me, winter crappy fishing, it's my favorite time of the year. You get out on the lake, normally there's not a lot of wind. I mean, currently we've got this cold front pushing through and the wind's been all crazy. We had like 40 mile an hour winds the other day. But normally you can get out there, you know, with a little chop, maybe slick calm. A lot of people disagree with slick calm, but as someone who has a smaller boat and I ain't got no 21 foot bass boat, it would be nice. And I don't got spot lock or, you know, power poles or whatever. Just me and a regular 12, uh, 12 volt trolling motor out there getting them. So to me, I love winter crappy fishing. There's nobody on the lake except fishermen. And slick calm days means that they're easier to stay on and target. So let's talk about the most general idea of winter crappy fishing. If you ask anybody, what do crappy do in the winter? Well, like in the fall, they go to the back creeks to fit the feed on shad and everything we discussed in the last video I made like this. Well, the winter crappy, you've got, I want to say, two types of winter crappy. Well, let's, let's go with three types of winter crappy. The first type is you've got these big balls of crappy. And I mean, they are just tight, compact, and that is the most fun you can have if you can find that crappy though that crappy that is the most fun you can have if you can find these crappy balls you know suspended off ledges suspended off brush suspended around brush in the brush uh on the on the sides of creek channels the river channels you know you find these groups of fish with your side scan and if you hit these schools of crappy at the right time, it takes no time to get a limit in your boat. But if you're targeting the big schools of crappy, I will say one thing about winter crappy fishing. Number one tip, if they don't bite, go find some more. You know, with the introduction of live scope, with the introduction of side scan, we spend so much time trying to make a fish bite that don't want to bite. You can make them bite sometimes, but 90% of the time, if you drop your jig down there, you do your thing, however you like fishing, they don't bite it, they're not gonna bite it. Go find some more. There's, there's thousands upon thousands of crappy and whatever lake you're in. I mean, if you're in a pond, I, I don't know what to tell you. But whatever lake you're in, I mean, a single female crappie has like 12,000, 12, 20,000 eggs, whatever, every year. There's some more crappie somewhere. Go find them. <laughs> so that, that's the generalized winter crappy thing. You want to find the big balls. They're gonna be in 15, 30 foot of water, generally. And if you find them when they're feeding, 
you can honestly rack up on them. Now for these <clears throat> schools of crappy, what baits do I recommend? First and foremost, everybody knows on the channel, we got the little minnow. The little minnow does everything. If you want to cast it and rind it in, bam, little minnow. If you want to throw it out there, let it pendulum back to the boat and they biting it on the fall, little minnow. If you want to drop it straight below your boat, little minnow. If you got a 14 foot ACC crappy stick like I do and you're targeting open water fish, little minnow. This thing just flat out catches fish. It catches numbers. You will get a limit in the boat if you consistently use the jig. I mean, point blank period. I, I've proven that on this channel I don't know how many times. <clears throat> now, don't get me wrong. You know, we're gonna talk about some other jigs here in a minute that work really well in the winter time. But for targeting schools, I will switch between the Little Minnow, Crappy Man Green, uh, Monkey Milk, Dirty Green, and the water gets really dirty down here in the winter time. So we got an, actually a new color coming out, which I'm gonna talk about here in a little bit that I'm thinking is gonna be phenomenal. I'm talking boom, lights out. Because I know rivers are already getting muddy out there, guys, and I gotta have something in it. So, we covered big schools of crappy. They're gonna boom, they're gonna get up in the schools, and you're gonna throw out there, wind in them, bam, got them. 20 fish, easy, two hours. <laughs> now, let's talk about the other kind of schools. The fun, to me, fun schools. You wanna find these deep docks, love docks. You want to find them right on that river channel when you get there there's going to be hundreds of crappy under these docks and you're going to take that jig you're going to line it up and you're going to fling her out there it's going to fall down and you're going to hook into a, a tree monster it's not even a thing now in all serious guys docks in the winter time are excellent excellent places to target fish like I said before 15 to 30 foot of water if it's by a creek channel or by a river channel definitely check it out um, I actually have a video of how to find the best dock on your lake which you can find in the, the past videos I go over everything on the map and everything how I target my docks and how I can go to pretty much any body of water and guarantee to find dock that's just loaded with crap so go check that video out guys <clears throat> but docks are definitely number two on the list number three the one and only live scope what are you gonna do with the live scope as you watch in my past the, the last video i watched we were chasing schools of crap that's not what i'm talking about here what i'm talking about with live scope you know we bought this mold to make this one jig you know what I'm, I'm gonna pull out the new color we're gonna talk about that as I talk about this jig so the reason I got this jig was because the, the guys over at Bass Tank Zeke Anderson and all of them they were using a jig uh, in last year's tournament with where they caught you know a seven fish limit of three pounders in a tournament at late uh, for Grenada or Granada and they were using something with a big old tail on it and I'm like man I got to find a jig that looks like that that we can make you know and I, I kept looking I kept looking I kept looking I could find the tail but the body would just be huge and you know here at Crab Man Jigs we are a nest fisherman I like small jigs I like a compact profile I like my jig to be able to float in front of their face and not just do that so we ended up getting this and we call this as y'all know the snipe beaver and this is the new color you know it looks really chartreuse on this but it's kind of like a yellowish white and we're calling this color toad kind of like a toad or an ugly green if uh 
you're a, a, a fish stalker fan, it kind of looks like ugly green. But the reason I want to talk about this is we call this lure the snipe beaver. That's because when you're using live scope and you're going around and you see one fish, I'm not talking about a school of fish. You know, you've got one fish in the water column. After you do it so long, you can realize, hey, that's a crappy, hey, that's a bass, hey, that's a whatever. But once you figure that out, you target this one fish, you follow him, you sneak up on him, and you drop your bait in front of him. And normally, once you get used to knowing what size fish it is, it's the good ones. I mean, you can go out there and target your pound and a half to two pound fish, but you may go 30 minutes trolling around and not see nothing to even throw at. So that's the drawback. Live does not catch fish, but it helps you catch the big ones. That's my intake on it. But yeah, it's a new color called Toad. It's gonna be available in every jig we got, except the little twister, I believe. So the Stabber, Stinker, Mena, Snipe Beaver, the Fluke, which is another amazing, amazing wintertime bait. We covered that in the past video, but all right. So we've, we've explained, we're 10 minutes into this. We have explained where you need to go. You want to go 15, 30 foot of water, find brush piles, ledges, channel swings, docks, docks with brush, docks without brush, just docks with a, a top on it. Use your electronics, find them. If you ain't got electronics, you just got to fish what I'm telling you to fish. Go on Navionics. Figure out the depth of something on the, the creek channel. You know, in the wintertime, you got to adjust. They let the water out. Lake Murray right now is down like six, seven foot. You adjust and just go out there and fish. Without electronics, you're not just going to, oh, I'm going to put my boat in the water. Uh, oh, I got a limit. No, it's, it's just not going to happen like that. It can if you know spots, but if you're out there searching for fish, you've got to fish. It may take you two, three hours to catch one and finally zone in on a school. But what you do, hey, there's a fish, you've located fish, you've located fish, you know, on the scope. What, in my opinion, is how you're gonna catch them this year. So, wait, wait, I'm, I'm gonna break this down. So if y'all haven't liked, liked the video yet, please like the video. So, simple, if you've got a big school of fish, is that what you're targeting off the ledges, off the brush piles, open water, whatever. Got a 132 ounce, crappy man jigs jig head. And that's that new toad color with a little stinker on it. All right, so now what you're gonna do you know, you're gonna throw your buoy out, whatever you need to do to help you locate the fish. You got live scopes, you know, whatever. Now, the, the technique for these open, like the schools of fish that we talked about at the beginning of the video, I'm gonna bomb it past them. I want this thing to go straight past them. And the, the way this 132 ounce jig falls, is kinda like this. Just a steady, you know, one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi, five. Whatever depth they're at, like if they're at 15 foot, I'm probably gonna count to five. Now you gotta think, this is a real key. You're throwing past them. If they were right here and you counted to five and started winding, you'd miss them. Let's say their mouth is my mouth. All right, you throw past them, one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi, five and you start winding, it's still gonna fall as you wind just a, a little bit. And look, it goes right right to them. Now, as you get closer to the boat, you know, it's gonna start coming back up. So you want to basically hit these fish on the middle of your cast. And I'm talking a slow, slow roll. Just, if you if you can feel that you're turning it too fast, you're turning it too fast. Mentally, if you think you're turning your reel too fast, you're turning it too fast. So with the little minnow or the little stinker, that's what I would do to catch these fish. 
if they're out on the brush pile, just don't don't be getting hung, you know, out there, woo! Oh, got him! Oh, it's a tree, and you done you done ran the whole school off. <clears throat> now, docks, same setup, 132 ounce. Even on 164 on docks is fine. You know, you want to shoot them up in there if you can. If the dock is just a flat dock, but it's got a lot on under it, figure out where the wind's blowing. So, do another example with my hands. Y'all, I know y'all love my little examples with my hands. So you got the dock, you ain't got no way to get up under it. I mean, there's, there's no hole. So, the wind's blowing this way. Or even, the, you're in a river or a creek, and the creek, you know, has a little bit of current. You'll throw it past right here, and just let it sit. Put your hand on the line and do not touch it. You know, you figure out what depth you want, honestly. You throw it out there and you're like, oh, that's six foot, it'll go down about four foot. Oh, that's eight foot, it'll go down about six foot. So as you let it sit, it's gonna pendulum back to you. But as it pendulums, look at them, get close for you. You throw it past the dock. It's gonna pendulum and it's gonna go under. Just a hair. And you'll be able to target these fish under a dock that has no way to shoot it. But if you can shoot it, shoot it by all means. Now, to the nitty gritty, you out there with your big old pole, with your jig head and your bobber stop so you can see it on the scope. How do you catch them? Like I was saying at the beginning, I'm going with the snipe beaver. I'm gonna put a bigger, I'm gonna put the biggest bait I possibly mentally can handle in front of the bigger fish that I'm targeting. Now, if you're finding a bunch of pound, pound and a quarter, pound and a halfers, hook up that little minnow and go to town with it. If you put this in front of their face, they're gonna bite it. If you put this in front of their face, they're gonna bite it. And if they don't bite it, like I said, find you another fish. Plenty of fish in that lake. You just gotta find the ones that are hungry. You can go to your whatever town you live in right now, throw out 4,000 McDoubles. There's gonna be somebody out there that don't pick up two or three of them and eat them. Or maybe one. Maybe that's just me to eat two or three of them. But anyway, guys, that's how I go about crappy fishing. You want to find the ledges, you want to find the brush piles, you want to find the docks. 15, 30 foot of water. Grab you some crappy man jigs. Link down below. Grab the new color toad. Just came out. Should be live on the website now. You know. We got a little behind on the orders, but this is a two-man business, me and the crappy man. And sometimes life happens. So anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, let me know down in the comments below, and I will catch you on the next one. Y'all have a good day.